Let's say you have a file located in SharePoint and you wanted to create a dynamic file path to that SharePoint file in an Excel cell so that whenever you change the SharePoint file path and hit refresh, your query updates with the new file's data. Here's how to do this. Here we have a knowledge article usage report located in our SharePoint site showing the article ID, name of the article, and IT support group that has viewed the article. This report tracks the article usage by service desk. The name of the report is called KA Report, and the sheet is called Usage. Then we have the second knowledge article usage report, but it's in a different SharePoint location. This report tracks the article usage by the back office team. The structure of the data needs to be the same as what we have in our service desk report. And important to note, the name of the workbook, which in this case is KA report, and the sheet name, in this case its usage, needs to be the same as our service desk report. Or if this was in a table format, the table names would need to be the same. Next, we need to get the SharePoint file path of our report. So with your report open in your SharePoint site, Click on Open in Desktop App, and this opens up your Excel workbook in Excel on your desktop. Click on File, Info, then click on Copy Path. And here we have a blank workbook open. Click on Data, then click on From Web, and paste your URL path. The next bit is really important, as we need to delete everything from the question mark up until the end else you will get an error when you try to connect to your file. Then click on OK. The first time that you connect to your SharePoint site, you will need to sign into your organizational account. But first, let's select the level to apply our settings to, and let's choose the very last level that drills down right to our KA report. Don't forget to sign in, and Power Query displays our sheet called Usage. And we can see the view of the report on the right here. We need to do some quick transformations to this data, so let's click on Transform Data. Now we have our usage sheet here in the Query Editor, and we have our columns in the first row. Remember, this wasn't in a table format in Excel. We could have converted the data into a table before importing, but this is also perfectly fine. All we need to do is remove the Change Type step, then click on Transform, and click on the drop-down for Use First Row as Headers, and click use first row as headers, and our headers are promoted and Power Query automatically performs the change type step. If you would like to learn how to remove the automatic change type step, which will also help you prevent certain errors in Power Query, I highly recommend you watch this video here. I've added the link in the description also. Now let's X out the change type step for now and perform it at the end. Then click on Group By. Let's group by Name of Article and call the new column name Number of Views by IT Support Group. Let's keep the operation as count rows and click on OK. And we have our report showing the views for each article. Let's perform the change type step and send this back to Excel. Next, we need to create our dynamic file path. I have the two file paths here for each of our reports. The first one is for Service Desk and the second one is for Back Office. Before we send our file path to Power Query, let's locate the name of the workbook that is common in both file paths, as that is the constant in our two file paths. Hence, we need to delete it from our file path, and only send the part that we want to be dynamic based on the location of our file in SharePoint. The name of the workbook will always be at the end of the URL, so here it is at the end, called KA Report. We need to delete everything from this forward slash. I like to think of this forward slash as if it were leaning on the name of the workbook, and if we remove the workbook name without removing the forward slash, the forward slash wouldn't have anything to lean on, and it would fall over. So let's delete it as well. And let's do the same for the second file path. Next, let's type Excel file path here, as this will be the column header of our table that we will send to Power Query. Then select Excel file path, and the file path for our service desk workbook and press Ctrl T to convert this to a table. Ensure my table has headers as checked and click OK. Let's name this table Excel file path. Next, let's send this to Power Query. You can right click on your table and select 
get data from table or range and we're taken to the query editor. And here in our queries pane on the left, we have our Excel file path imported as a table. What we actually need is for this table to be an object so that we can insert it into our usage query. Let's remove the change type step as we don't need that. To create our object, right click on the side of the file path here and click on drill down. And the value for the file path is returned as an object, as we can see from this icon on the left here. Let's go back to our usage query and click on the source step. And here in the formula bar, we have the Excel workbook function that brings in our source data using this file path here. Now we need to figure out which portion of this file path we need to remove and insert our Excel file path object that we just created. This is really easy, as we need to remove everything up until that forward slash that is leaning on the Excel workbook that is the common name in both SharePoint file paths. So delete everything up until the forward slash and KA report. Then type Excel and the IntelliSense brings up our object. Select Excel file path, then enter a space and type the ampersand sign. And then insert the quotation marks again as everything in quotation marks is fixed and points to the Excel workbook, KA report. Then hit enter and we get this formula.firewall error. It says that this query references other queries or steps, so it may not directly access a data source. Please rebuild this data combination. How a query is not allowed to access two different data sources originating from different queries in the same step. There are two ways to fix this. The one is to ignore this error, and the other is to rebuild the data combination. I will show you how to ignore the error for this workbook. If you would like to learn how to rebuild the data combination, please watch this video here. The link is in the description also. To fix this error, click on File, Options and Settings, and click on Query Options. Under Current Workbook, click on Privacy, and here in Privacy Levels, Combine Data According to Your Privacy Level Settings for each source is selected as the default. This option controls how queries that combine data from multiple data sources behave. Let's instead click on ignore the privacy levels and potentially improve performance, which means that data privacy settings are completely ignored when queries combine data from multiple data sources. And if you hover over the information icon here, it shows that the setting could expose sensitive or confidential data to an unauthorized person. So ignoring data privacy checks makes it more likely that you or one of your users could create a query that accidentally sends data to an external data source, which could breach your organization's rules. So I would definitely recommend you watch the video on rebuilding the data combination. Then click on OK. Let's click on Refresh Preview and our query is fixed. Now let's send our Excel file path object back to Excel as a connection only Click on File, Close and Load To. So now if we move our file path up for our service desk report out of this table and bring in the file path for our back office report and hit Refresh, our query automatically updates with the views for our back office team. If you'd like to have the flexibility to dynamically change the output of your queries depending on their value, then please check out this video here on Power Query Parameters. Or if you'd like to learn how to create a dynamic age analysis, then you should definitely check out this video here on automating your age analysis. I hope these videos enable you to automate as many of your tasks as possible. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Yeah!